The return of Mickey! Oh! With a lipstick mark on it. Mickey Mondays. Before I forget, I'm drinking chai, la not latte. A chai tea. I don't like lattes. I'm not big on milk to begin with, but I'm drinking chai tea out of my Mickey mug, which is my favorite cup. Hello! <laughs> it's Monday, April 21st. Did you have a good Easter? Did you have a good weekend? Did you eat a lot of chocolate? I didn't. I'm so proud of myself. I did not eat Easter chocolate at all. At all. So I'm being very good again. I, um, I was consistent throughout the week. I'm allowing myself one day of rest. And I'm also allowing myself a cheat day. On Saturday, I did not have chocolate. Well, it wasn't Easter yet, but that's besides the point. I attended a class all day long. I made, or I started, painting on a silk scarf. Do you guys want to see it? I'll take you. All right, so see how big it is? This is, don't mind the mess. This is my living room. Uh, that's the silk scarf that I started in a class and I kind of made it doodling style just because I can't draw a straight line on that big of a of a piece. It's huge! This thing is 3 by 3 36 inches by 36 inches. And um, <laughs> see this thing here? That thing? Uh, we use this liquid that comes in a tube to do the black outline and the tube broke halfway so the stuff came out all over my the side here so I decided to um, add some more here and there I need I need to finalize this because I'm not quite all that happy about uh, those things I need to add some dots it needs something else but look how cool the middle is I was actually able to fuse two colors together. I love it, love it. So I can't draw straight lines for beans. So I decided that uh, my lines would be all scribbly. And that's, you know, make it work for yourself, right? But I love it. Right now it's stretched on a big frame. But I really, really enjoyed that. Isn't that fun? Um, it was rather labor intensive because the frame is so big and I needed to be hunched over at some point and it was in a small room, it was very stuffy, we needed to keep the door closed because there was another class going on at the same time and I got really hot, I was wearing my spring boots, and anyway. But I think I'm going to enjoy finishing it at home. I'll get around to doing that this week, I'm sure. After the class Saturday night, I cheated, I had gelato. But I walked to the place, so that doesn't count. And I had gluten-free beer. I don't drink. <laughs> but Xander had bought me, because I was having company over the Christmas uh, holidays, he bought me a six-pack of gluten-free beers. And it's quite good, actually. I like beer. I enjoy... I See, I drink not for the buzz. I drink for the taste. I enjoy wine. I enjoy beer. I love beer. I love the taste of a good beer. I make it sound as if I drink a lot, but I don't. I really don't. And I was so tired. And I had a, a few um, episodes of the drama that I'm currently watching to watch on the internet. So I had planned on doing nothing but, you know, just watching TV on my computer and um, enjoying my beer with cheese and crackers. And I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep on one of the episodes. So I only had time to watch two. Uh, but I had planned on finishing the whole show. <laughs> Anyways, but that was okay. So I think I was in bed by 10 o'clock. And yesterday, I had a very relaxed day. So yesterday was my relaxed day because it was Easter. The store was closed. So I didn't have to go there to uh, pick up anything or photograph anything. I did something, but before I get to that, I want to talk a little bit about my time assistant. 
I'm keeping with it again still. I love it. Uh, went for my walk this morning. It was 9 degrees. By now it should be 19 degrees outside. It's awesome. Springs in the air. I just realized though this morning that I need to allow myself to use the time assistant more as a guide than as a rigid, rigid schedule. Uh, because sometimes things do happen. Uh, for instance, this morning I needed to answer a very, very important email uh, that I got from one of you guys. A very touching and very profound email. <clears throat> and I needed to take the time to answer that email. And it took me a while, but it's necessary. Uh, I also took a lot of time in reading your comments and I know I'm repeating myself. We always say, oh, you guys are awesome, but it is true. The feedback I get from you guys is just unbelievable. It's awesome. It's it's what keeps me going. I need to touch on that email that I got this weekend. I'm not going to say who it is and I'm not even going to reveal the content of that. It was a very personal email, but it was one that touched me to the core. The person was saying that the vlog that I did on the Hollyhocks and what I said about the, the journey or the story behind that Hollyhock, me having problems and struggling with the actual drawing itself and not letting the float go to where it was supposed to be rather than, you know, I was trying to dictate to it as opposed to listening to it. The person was saying that a blank canvas can be very, very scary. For me, it is both scary and exciting. It's exciting because it has the promise of turning into something that I'm really proud of, but it's also very scary because I think we all forget to create for ourselves. Let's face it, I'm putting myself out there to you guys so I can't help but have in the back of my mind the notion that what I'm creating should be surpassing what I just did because you guys are watching, you know? So I think we tend to create for others and art journaling and mixed media in any form anyways, any art form I think should be creating for yourself first but we forget that because other people view it so there's this obligation that we put on ourselves to outperform ourselves all the time and it's not supposed to be that way so with that notion in mind I created um, the project that I'm about to show you I'm gonna sh well I'm gonna show it to you this is the final product very quickly what this was about was a piece of uh, watercolor paper that I used to test out some of the supplies I was using last week in a tutorial. I used uh, the Irresistible Sprays by Imagine Crafts. I was also using Dilution Sprays. There's India ink there. This was from the page that I was having a hard time on Friday. And it was just lying around there. And it was just like tones of <laughs> different shades of black, little bit of purple or fuchsia and a little bit of gold in there somehow or yellow and I had it in my hand and I was going to throw it in the basket and I looked at it and something was telling me not to throw it away then I went back to my idea about how Dina Wakely works you know like she practices on tags and stuff like that so I took this piece I put it on my table and I went okay I'm just going to start doodling. And I started making flowers, but I called them my chameleon flowers just because I did not color the flower so the, the actual face of the flower kind of meshes with the background, but the inside is colored. So the inside is itself. I don't know if you're following me. This is my theory behind this. The inside is, I guess, my true self and the outside wanting to blend in with the rest and the outside is kind of like a chameleon effect. It takes the illusion of what the outside is, in essence, if that makes any sense. So it was kind of what I was reflecting on following that email that I got. It's also about me wanting to blend in with the rest, you know, like being approved by everybody. So it's got some strong meaning, but at the end of it, I was really happy. This took no time to put together. I was just doodling and I, I filmed it 
in case something good would happen from it. And it did, and I'm glad I did. So I'm going to insert that clip now. Okay, so here is the not so good looking page. <laughs> It has a lot of the irresistible sprays that I used last Friday on a tutorial or in a tutorial. And there's there's quite a bit of um, texture on this. There's also Black India ink, some dilution sprays. I just decided to doodle over that. So I'm using a poster paint pen by Sharpie. It's a white, I think it's in the medium tip, I believe. And I just started creating those pod-like uh, flowers. And I had no preconceived idea of what it would look like. I just started doodling. And I got such a, such a sense of freedom when doing that, that I just kept on going. And I figured if it doesn't turn out the way I like it, originally I was going to throw it away, so I'm just going to throw it away. But it turned out that I really enjoyed what I was, uh, what I was doodling. Now I'm bringing out a big brush pen in gray to do the inside of the flower but it didn't work the way I wanted it to. The blending was very difficult because the poster paint pen uh, or the poster paint from the pen was not glossy enough and I couldn't blend it properly so I busted out my oil pastels and I took kind of like a fuchsia purplish color um, which is not a color I reach for often but it blended, like it worked well with the background. And I'm using a brush sticks by Imagine Crafts to blend it. A paper stump would have done the job as well, but I really like that tool. It's got like a hard sponge at the end and it works really well for blending. And I also decided to add some um, shadows between what I refer to as rocks, <laughs> white rocks. And I also, um, as you can see, I also made sure that I uh, put in like half rocks off of the page so that the rocks wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't look like they were floating around. So that way they're just anchored uh, to the bottom of the page. And now I'm going to go over to define some more the flowers because of the blending. It, it sort of took away from the sharpness of the lines. And because the rest of the doodle is quite sharp, um, or the lines are crisp, nice and crisp, I wanted that again around the top of the flower. 
And of course, I elongated those little uh, stems from inside the flower so they wouldn't look like they're floating as well. And to have the illusion that they're coming from the inside. I also decided to add some dots um, to the background and now that I'm looking at it, it almost looks as if this is an underwater scene uh, because of the dots it makes me think of bubbles, like water bubbles. Now I'm using a pen touch a pen by Sakura and as you can see I made a boo-boo I made a mistake in the word chameleon so I was able to correct it in time but it's another um, paint pen which I absolutely love and so there it is um, as you can see I was able to turn this very dark and dreary piece of paper into something that I'm really happy with I loved how the ink had spread around the edges of the paper and that's probably why I didn't want to throw it away. I also liked the touches of gold here and there and um, I was able to turn this into something that uh, that's fun and I'm glad I didn't throw it away. You see, I was going to throw this in the garbage and I'm looking at it and I really, really like it. And this page, by the way, is a little bigger than my art journal, so I can't include it in there. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a larger journal. Not, I'm, I don't want to add it to my moleskin, like the giant moleskin that I have, because that's strictly reserved for uh, the 48 hour, uh, the 48 hours, the 48 weeks class. But I think I, I've seen bigger uh, sketch pads. And I think I'm going to glue this as well as my original doodle that I did with Kathy Bluto. I think I'm going to include that in the journal because sometimes in that big journal, sometimes it's fun to just create on a piece of paper. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is this book because it was mentioned also in that wonderful email that I got. The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that book. It's very popular. It's been out in circulation since 1992 was the first print. And uh, it's it's called uh, The Artist's Way, A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity, a course in discovering and recovering your creative self. It's a 12-week program, and it's a wonderful book. I started reading that, I think, in 2010, if I'm not mistaken, just before I was diagnosed with celiac disease. And, and once I got sick and, you know, went to the hospital and whatnot, everything kind of, like, fell to the wayside. And I did not read it again. In hindsight, I should have because it would have probably gotten me through a lot of hardships. But I will pick this book up again and I will probably start from the beginning. This book is like the Bible for artists, I'm pretty sure. So I hope that you've enjoyed that doodle. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you are creating and in your happy bubble. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you later. Bye.